Problem number eight. White has just invaded black's high Chinese type formation here. How should black attack the stone? Black should kick the stone. When white extends, black will play here. These stones are really heavy. White is sort of committed to them, so white will jump here. Black will foot sweep them, and then white will try to jump into the center. Even if white didn't stand here and said jump, white stones are still vulnerable here. And these stones that black got on the outside are reinforcing black's corner up on top, as well as black secured territory in the bottom here. If instead of kicking, black just backs off here, then white will play here. And not only is black giving up corner territory, but this stone is becoming useless to attack this now. If black pincers from the other way, this is sort of redundant with black's stone already here, but white will attach and make some shape in the corner. And so this is a, a failure for black. Problem number 16, white has just invaded black's territory up on top here. Black has a nice wall facing his extension and white decided to invade it. So the question for black is how does black attack the stone? Black's move is to shoulder hit the stone. And white is able to attach here. And if white extends, black will follow. If white jumps, peeping at this cut, black will simply connect. If white honeys, black will honey back. And then white's gonna try to make some shape with this attachment and this jump. Black will limit the eye space by going here. And now that black has all this outside influence and white is basically alive, black will come back and shoulder hit this stone. Now black is building a nice big moya on the, on the left here. If after black does the knight's move here, white does their own knight's move, then black is going to attach here and force white to cut and capture. And then, similar to before, build a moil on the outside. Now this wall is a little bit more efficient and better than before. White still needs to live. And so, similar to the last problem, black now got a wall here. Black can aim at doing the shoulder hit over here. And white is barely alive. If after black does the knight's move, white pushes this way. And then Hane's, black will Hane back. If white cuts, and Atari is trying to make some shape. Now Black's wall has no defects facing this way, and similar to before, Black will just do the shoulder hit and build up this moyo. If Black is soft and doesn't do the knight's move but does the jump, then White's going to jump as well. And now Black doesn't have a good follow-up to attack these stones, so they've escaped. If Black is too severe and does the diagonal, then White will do the knight's move, and similar to before, we'll start jumping. And again, White is now into the center. If Black is even more severe and does the cap, then White is going to poke through. And do this sort of sequence. And now white has this cut to look forward to. White is going into black's previously owned moyo and destroying it. So this is a big failure for black. Problem number 19. Black has this giant wall facing his extension stone here. And white invades on the fourth line. How does black attack the stone? Similar to the last problem, black should just do the, the knight's move for attacking. If white does the knight's move in response, black will do the knight's move again. And so black's goal is to push these stones into black's nice thick wall here. And so these stones are going to be lost. If black is more severe and does the capping move, then white is just going to poke right through. Problem number 25, after this Joseki is finishing up, white decides to make this extension here to reinforce their corner. How should black continue in this game? Black's move is to do the armpit hit here, poking at this group's shape, and if white responds, black will back off. This group needs to make some eyes, so white will go here and then fix their shape. And then black is going to shoulder hit the single stone here and use the nice outside thickness to build a big moyo in the center. So instead of white playing here, white needed to play here, and now white's group down here is secure. You've probably seen this extension as a response to black's move here, 
but in this case white really wants to get this move because it aims at poking through and getting to the outside. Problem number 110, white just secured life in the corner by playing this connection point. How should black continue? Black should Atari the single stone here, and it will prevent black from getting the Panuki and securing the shape. White will connect. After white connects, black is going to attack this group by playing the jump here, forcing white to extend a couple times and then jumping himself. And then black will play the knight's move to continue attacking it. So now black is securing nice territory on the right side here. Black is also securing territory at the top, and white is just running. If after black um, Ataris and white connects here, black pushes from this side. The white's going to lean on this group, and if black tries to press down on this way, white will again continue to lean on this group and be pushed this way, and then black will try to secure the rest of the moyo with this. However, because white has this stone here, white can play on the sector line and reduce the moyo. So this is lower than it was before, and this isn't as secure. So that's why black wants to push white the other way, because after this attack has gotten this far, this moyo is still open. Problem number 116, how should black play in this position? You probably saw the lone stone here in the middle of black's sphere of influence, so let's attack it. Black's move is to extend from this side, and if white jumps, black will follow. White tries to make shape by doing the armpit hit against this stone. Black will peep, and then cut it off. So these stones are still on the run, black took profit with the foot sweep here, and these two moves reinforce the corner on this side. If after black peeps, white decides to go here, then black will pull back. If now white connects, black will play here. White pushes through, looking to get this move in sente. However, if white attaches here, white can only get one eye, and then black would seal it in and this thing would die. So white needs to continue running, since white has a two stone uh, wall facing here. White can jump a two space extension. Black will block from this side. White will jump again. Black will peep again and then play here. And now black is getting a lot of thickness facing his corner and side here. White is still on the run, needs to play another move to connect. Um, again, white can attach here and get a, an eye. Uh, black could potentially cut these stones off by playing here, but the fight would spill all over the board which is why it's better for black to chase it in this circumstance instead of attaching here. That's why black peeps and does this. After black peeps here, white may not do either of these two moves and instead will attach, or could attach. Uh, if black connies, white play here, forcing black to connect here, and then pull back. White is making a lot more shape in here, has the potential to live, but again, black got this nice reinforcement thickness here. White could also pull here, connecting with this stone, and if black pushes through, white will let him connect, and then Hani here. Now white is alive on the second and third line, black got even more thickness on the outside. So now black will probably want to contain this spill, or extend down here. Because again, when your opponent is crawling on the on the second line here, and you're, you're ahead in the extension race, this is a really good result for you. In the original correct answer, after black plays this foot sweep, White could play here, threatening to undercut and get through here. Black will block, and then white will threaten to link up and kill this stone. Black will peep at it, and then link up underneath. White still doesn't have eyes, that's so why white will need to run again. Uh, if white just pushes directly, this is not a good result for white, because black will just block and pull back, giving up that stone. This stone still has Aji for white, white is still not alive, and so this is not a good result for white. Another thing black can do, after they do this jumping exchange and white extends here, instead of peeping, black can also attach on the inside. And if white honey is black, will then extend up and peep at that, and then honey back, and connect. Now this stone is lost, white is nothing but a stick and has even less shape than he does before. So this is also a good result for black. Um, if instead of honey underneath, white honey is on top, black is okay with this because black will just connect underneath like this. White stones are still without a base and will need to run. If instead of either of these two, black just does the knight's move attack like we saw before, then white's gonna attach and make some eye shape. White has also secured some territory on the side here. Um, and after this, black really can't attack this anymore. 
and so Black will try to use this influence by reinforcing the corner. However, Black needs to be aware of this stone here. This stone has some Aji left in it that White could potentially use to attack his corner up here. So it's just something for Black to be aware of. 